Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the Alt Dev Student Summit. We are pleased to present uh, Jay Margulis and Phil Tibutowski. Uh, note that you can submit some questions for them using the posted Google Moderator link at any time, and we'll address these at the Q&A at the end. Uh, feel free to join the discussion on Twitter using the Alt Dev Comp hashtag, too. Uh, without further interruption, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Hi guys, I'm Jay Margulis. Uh, I run Lunar Giant Studios. We have a little game on Steam called Delve Deeper. We also have a game that we did in collaboration with Nerdcore rapper Megaran, some of you may be familiar with. I also chair the International Game Developers Association of Chicago. And I don't smell. Phil? Hey guys, uh, I'm Phil Tibtoski. I'm president over at Young Horses, uh, which is an independent studio that I started with a couple of my friends from college. Uh, we made the game Octodad, um, which we were an IGF student finalist in 2011, and then we went on to form our company. Um, now we're working on a new game, Octodad Deadliest Catch, uh, which we just got greenlit for for Steam. Um, I'm also on the Indie City Games Board, which is like a, a really cool organization or club here where we all get together and share our work with each other. So our topic today is DIY game development, and you are not going to see me for about 20 minutes of the talk because I'm going to be sharing my screen, and then we'll hopefully have about 10 minutes to answer questions. So think of questions as we're going through, and we'll, we'll try to get to them. So here we, here we go. Phil, can you see that? Yeah, yeah you're good. Excellent. should start at the beginning and not the end. Start at the beginning and not the end. Well, you never know. I mean, <laughs> all right, here we go, guys. All right, DIY development. DIY means do it yourself. So we got the first slide. The DIY. Which is basically, I don't know. That's that's what we're all about. Um, about 20 years ago, like something like this would be really hard to do. Like there wasn't really a lot of easy ways to both access all the information we have now, and there wasn't a lot of easy ways to project your work or give, you know, give everyone an idea of what you're doing now. Like that's all so easy with things like Twitter and Facebook and anything like that. And you could host your games for free or uh, in a lot of places or, you know, set up your own work. Um, and so a lot of this stuff is made doing it yourself and like being independent, um, something that's viable um, and something that is worth doing. Um, we went from being a student team in like a year and a half to being our own uh, our own studio, our own company, working on a commercial game that's going to be on Steam um, in about a year. So it's, and it doesn't require like a lot of money either. Like there's a lot of ways around all of that. Like a traditional company costs a lot of money to start and all we've done is run a simple Kickstarter, um, which a majority of that just goes back into licensing and some other stuff like that, but point being that this stuff is really easy now with, and especially there's like other things like hacker spaces and um, collectives like Indie City Games here in Chicago, um, where you can go and meet up with other developers and get feedback and kind of build your repertoire of contacts, uh, which just kind of help you out in any questions you have and things like that. Um, so things are easier than ever with this, but you also have to put yourself out there Right. So, Phil, I don't know I'm if move, you have anything to add. No, I, I'm going to move on to the next slide now, and I'm going to ask you some questions too. So we hold. Um, so that so the basic concept is so far that there's this big DIY movement out there. Uh, students can get involved in it. Uh, professionals can who want to work on the site can get involved in it. And then there's this other thing, kind of like running alongside, which is this the job problem that the games industry and and just many industries. Uh, face right now. So uh, a common question I hear as the chair of IGD Chicago when we hold events is how do I get a job in the games industry? The truthful answer to that is I have I have no idea. There are so many different paths that you can take to get there but the, the one thing that we want to drive home today is uh, that doing it yourself really will get you, is put you on that path. So the first question you want to ask is why do you want someone to hire you? And Phil, what do you what do you think about that? Why do I want someone to hire me? Why? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I would I would assume that I have something to 
offer them and that I want to create games and I want to, um, I don't know, be a creative force in the industry. What, what made you choose to uh, run an independent studio rather than apply for a job right out of college? Right. Um, I had done a lot of research and I had talked to a lot of people who were already in the industry and just kind of got a good idea of like the things they were able to do and not able to do. And I don't know. I mean, with Octodad in particular, um, we just found that there was an audience for it. And so we wanted to continue doing it our way um, and didn't really want any sort of pushback from anyone else. And we realized it was possible to do this and possible to be successful through things like watching like Indie Game the movie with like Team Meat and other people like that. Um, and so we just kind of went for it. So we were both at uh, an Indie City Games meeting yesterday, and actually uh, Heinz Schuller, who used to be the art director at Day One Studios, they put out Fear 3, uh, was talking about how after he went indie, he appreciated making games a lot more. His basic proposition was, uh, why ask, how do I get a job in the games industry when you really don't get to focus on making games anymore at big, big studios? Why not do something small instead of looking for somebody to hire you? So either way, any way you approach it, though, whether, you're, whether you want to start your own indie studio or uh, work at another studio, uh, there's one thing you need to know, which is, hey, stupid, learning never ends. <laughs> <laughs> so especially in game development, it's, uh, every, it's very competitive. Uh, whether you want to work at a big studio or even at an indie studio, you're competing to get so many pe you're, you're competing for attention. You're competing for jobs that everybody's looking for. Um, and the only way that you're going to make it in the net, uh, that is to learn and learn on your own. Um, I know, Phil, that you do this basically all the time. Uh, yeah. And this is your big advocate for this. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, basically the idea behind it is that uh, not only are you, you know, fighting for these jobs with or fighting to create these jobs with people um, – with your peers, with people you've gone to school with that come from other schools and things like that. But you're also competing against people who've been in the industry for 15, 20 years and now they're looking for new jobs. And so in order to actually be able to compete with them, you have to do like everything you can to better yourself, um, you know, pretty much every day. Um, college was really just learning how to learn, how to teach yourself. And with something like that, you have to actually apply it once you get out of school. And one thing I see a lot of students do that, you know, even some of my peers that do that doesn't, that just leaves them with nothing is they get out of school, they get another job to, you know, sustain themselves financially or whatever, but then they forget or they don't think to continue just getting better at what they really want to do, which is make games. And so, I mean, I spend a lot of time reading a lot of articles, trying new things, and talking to people in the space to learn as much as I can about what's currently going on and learn more about like how I can get better at what I'm doing. And it's hard to do because you have to set your own goals and your own milestones and stuff like that and actually be kind of strict with yourself in a way. But it's really worth it in the end because then you're actually competitive with all these other people out there uh, either looking to start their own studios or get jobs. So let's, let's uh, jump right into the steps that you can take now to learn on your own um, and the things that you should be doing right now as a student and that you can do, uh, you know, after you graduate from college as well. So uh, number one, and I think one of the most important things, is to find a mentor. And don't make the same mistakes that they did. Phil, I know you guys have a great mentor at Young Horses. Why don't you talk about him a little bit? So... Patrick Curry uh, was an advisor for us on the first Octodad game, um, and at the time he was working at Wide Load, and then he moved on to Disney, and now he's got his own independent studio called Fun Machine in Austin. But Patrick's been in the industry for a while, I mean, obviously a lot longer than us, since we've only been around for a year and a half or so. But uh, he kind of helped us through the first game, just in some advisory capacity, just kind of giving advice from time to time, but now... Now that we have that contact, we utilize it as much as possible. And like, I mean, we're obviously friends with him and whatnot, but we'll go to him anytime we have questions about contracts or business deals or even just running the studio in general because uh, he was kind of like a creative director at one point. And so he's got a lot of right. management experience that, you know, obviously I don't have, um, which has helped us out a lot because whether you're all friends and you get along or you're just business 
acquaintances or whatnot, there's going to be bumps in the road to where there's necessary conflict that has to be resolved, and you can't just let it go astray, because if you do, it can tend to kind of rip things apart. Right, and I think another another important point is that sometimes there are questions that do have correct answers, and having a mentor there who can just quickly and easily give you those answers will keep you on track. Um, right. Of, you don't spend as you don't spend as much time just kind of searching for these things that you could quickly get from someone who's previously experienced it. Right. Exactly. And on top of that, they introduce you to really uh, interesting people sometimes too. Oh yeah, definitely. So that's the number one step. Uh, everybody, I'm, find a mentor. Whether you're a student, whether you're graduate, whether you've graduated from college, find somebody in the industry who can give you kind of good advice. Um, maybe Phil and I could be your mentor. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, number two, know. <laughs> work in teams with competent people who you trust. So, Phil, we were talking about this a little bit before because if if you People can really get you off track if you're not working with people who are who can do their jobs and who will do what they say. Um, I've run into problems like this before at Lunar Giant. How about you? Yeah, uh, I mean, we were running into that sort of problem at the beginning of the project. One person just kind of had fallen off the radar, and we'd given them multiple chances to kind of get back on. And now looking back at it, we kind of realized that we may have waited too long. Um, to kind of correct the problem, but right. the point being is that even if you're friends with the person or whatever, um, you want to have realistic goals and expectations of each other, right. and you want to actually follow through with that, and if you don't have that, a lot of the times, no matter how good your game idea is or how smart all of you are, that game's not going to get done, or it's not going to be done as well as it could be, um, simply because those kind of personal relationships and tiffs can kind of rip things up. So if, uh, if you've got the right team of people and you've got a mentor and you go ahead and you have to you, you do the D part of the DIY now, You're, you have to make something. And I think yeah. if you look around you as students, at least I remember when I was back, back in college, uh, if I looked around me, I, I would say probably about 90% of my peers weren't doing anything. So by do, by, just by virtue of creating a game, by not procrastinating, by doing things, you're putting yourself, yourself ahead of your peers. Phil, you, you, you're a recent graduate from DePaul. Yeah. I think you could probably speak to this uh, as well. It's a really interesting thing because while you're in school, um, if you're going for games in particular, like you're making small projects for classes and things like that, which are, you know, two weeks, five weeks, ten weeks at the most, um, which that's great and all, but it's in the classroom and it's usually some sort of specific goal in mind as far as like, oh, I'm going to learn this tool or something like that. It's not a game you really want to make, and it's not something you're taking your own personal time to really work on. Um, and what a lot of employers look for is someone who's actually completed uh, a game from start to finish, who's made a game from start to finish, which is surprisingly, surprisingly, like not many people have actually done that once they get out of school. Um, they may have made like little bits and pieces of things, but they haven't finished a game completely. And it's really impressive to see someone start from you know concept to play a little game. And it doesn't have to be like an amazing, you know, triple A, amazing piece of art. It just needs to be something that you can play and that and that shows like that you put all the work into it. So Octodad's a perfect example of that, right? I mean you guys started working on that when you were still students at DePaul. And now look what it's turned into is something, you know, that's not just a tool, not just a game that you can show to imp uh, possible employers, but a game that uh, has a lot of potential and will probably make you quite a bit of money once once you put it out for sale. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But I mean, yeah, it's it's been great, and we worked on that um, in our free time during the summer, and then we just kind of kept working on it uh, after school and, and stuff like that. Um, but it's just it's just amazing how many people go through these programs and then they come out and they haven't really made anything because they're spending their time, you know, playing games or just farting right. around or whatever, which, like, I realized that I didn't spend as much time as I probably should have mm -hmm. um, working on projects, and it was only that last, like, year, year and a half where I actually kicked in and started doing things. So the, the real point of, of this, uh, before we move on, I just kind of want to kind of hone in on this, is if, if you look around and every, all, a lot of your peers aren't creating something, 
you're you're already putting yourself ahead by making something right now. You're already making yourself either more desirable to potential future employers, and you're also making yourself you're also bettering yourself and possibly creating something that's saleable um, either while you're still in school or after you graduate. So let's say you've just graduated from college now. For the job applicant, what do you do? Uh, you really need to make something now. Um, having a portfolio is really essential. Uh, Phil, I know you uh, shopped around a little bit after you graduated from mm -hmm. college at different studios. Um, why don't you speak to that a little bit? So, I mean, I, it kind of goes back to what I was saying before, and that you just really mm -hmm. need a game. Um, and in that, a lot of people get out of school and then they're looking for jobs, but they're not doing anything to improve themselves or their portfolio at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know it's hard and it takes up a lot of your time. And, you know, you don't really have much time for anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, people need to know you've made something and people, you need to, like, look for feedback on your work and try to improve because if you're not currently getting a job, maybe it's because of the interview, maybe it's because of uh, your portfolio, but you should be looking and trying to find, like, uh, constructive criticism to kind of help you with these things, whether it be, you know, you're not that great at interviewing or you need to polish up your portfolio or whatever. Um, I know with me, they were always pretty impressed that I had this like completed game that I had out on the internet uh, that people were able to play, download uh, right. publicly because it opens you to public feedback, which is a lot different than something you would get from like your professors or just your friends. Right. And there, so we're talking about two different kinds of feedback. You have public feedback, which is the, the kind of response you get from people who are playing your game. And then there's also this really essential part of making a game uh, where, where you internally work with your team and, and give each other feedback, and you learn to handle that. That makes you a better developer. And we were talking before, and Phil, you had a great story about uh, when you guys were first working on Octodad that I really liked, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I mean, like, when we had first started working on the game, we were all still pretty green in that it was the first big game that we had worked on. Otherwise, we, like I mentioned before, we worked on little things for classes. And um, in those, you don't really have a lot of time for iteration. It's just kind right. of like get the assignment done, get it in. Right. Um, with these, with this project, we actually had that time. And when, the, when it first started, uh, the team was 18 people, and we didn't know each other all that well, so it was very interesting... <laughs> trying to, um, I don't know, shoot down ideas or at least say, hey, well, what if we did this and not have people give a lot of pushback? And it took a little while to learn that if we were all just very open to each other's uh, feedback, that things went a lot smoother. And even if that feedback or even if an idea didn't make its way from there to in the game, it at least helped us uh, direct the rest of the development or it brought up another idea. So it's, right. it's, you can't ever be afraid of people's feedback, whether it's positive or negative. Right. Because um, everything is helpful. And one thing you realize once you get out into the real world is it's much more difficult to get that um, from people voluntarily. Like we seek it out now and we hope for it. Right. So, it's, yeah. so let's check this segue out. One of the places you seek it out is, boom, friends. <laughs> You need to learn to make friends as a game developer. Um, going to conventions, local game developer groups, uh, going to those kinds of events, as well as participating in online communities has been a huge help um, for me at Lunar Giant and I'm sure for you as well, Phil. And one of the things, uh, if I can tell a real quick story, uh, I two, two things about me that are inter interesting. Uh, one, up until about two years ago, uh, before I became the chair of IGDA Chicago, I didn't even really know that many game developers in Chicago. Barely even knew it existed. Two, I didn't, uh, up until about, again, about two years ago, I didn't know that uh, I was an indie game developer. <laughs> I, I, I just was making games out of my house, right, with my buddies. Right. And, uh, and, and then I looked online and I was like, oh my god, there are these people who are making these things called indie games, and I'm pretty sure I'm one of those people. And, and what's astounding about that is in the, the two years after that, I have learned so much. I have, I have become a better game developer. I've become a better, you know, whatever, business, indie business dude. 
Um, and I've, I've, you know, really learned a lot from, from being involved in these sorts of communities. Yeah. Um, so, so they're all really important. Now, Phil, you probably go to more conventions than I do. Uh, why don't we speak about that a little bit? Uh, conventions are great in that they give you hard milestones for your projects because right. they're things you can't really move the date for. Because um, if you set your own milestones, you can be like, oh, well, maybe we'll get it done the week after that instead of this week or whatever. But if you're going to PAX or you're going to GDC or something like that, those, those are things you can't move. And it's really good motivation um, to get things done. Uh, and also just meeting people there can be huge because the smallest connections you make with a lot of people can lead to huge opportunities later on. Um, whether it be just like they're talking to someone and they talk about your game and then that person's interested or whatever. Like a lot of our things we've done have come through those types of interactions. Um, and it's just a good to know like what's going on in the industry and who's who and who's right. making what. So I want to um, stress real quick uh, before we move on to the next slide that we have a website that looks kind of crappy right now, but it's fantastic, full of information. It's uh, DIYGameDev.com, and we have a list of a lot of conventions, local game developer groups, et cetera, that you can check out. Um, so moving on to basically our final slide, now we're going to do a little wrap-up and then questions. Uh, the art of doing it. Um, and I'm going to read through these real quick because this is very important. Know how to manage your business. Know how to market yourself in your game. Know how to hold yourself and others accountable through project management and workflow tools. Uh, synerg- that's a fun, the last one was just a joke. Synergy. So, <laughs> um, I think these are all really important things. Um, Phil, what do you, can you, how about you speak about that a little bit? Uh, a lot of the business stuff and marketing and things like that kind of went back, goes back to community and mentors, and those are things you can learn from them. Uh, mm-hmm. At least that's what we did instead of hiring a lawyer. And I mean, you eventually need to go through legal at some point. But right. we did a lot of research just through things outside of that where we could just, you know, just ask someone simple questions. And so we avoided a lot of fees and silly consulting stuff mm-hmm. that you don't really need to go through if you meet the right people. Um, you know, one of the things I, I want to hone in on here is knowing how to hold yourself and others accountable. Um, yeah, through project management tools and whatnot, but also just in general. Being honest with the people you work with and being very forward with them will save you headaches and hours of time um, for minutes of uncomfortableness that you'll have uh, at that time. Yeah. That's something I think has been one of the biggest lessons I've learned in, in making things is just be honest with the people you're working with and don't worry about being uncomfortable. Um, we were talking about that a little bit, Phil. You had some interesting comments about that. I don't know if you want to jump in on that at all. I mean, it's just always helpful to do that. I don't know. Um, Synergy. <laughs> yeah, if you're if, if you're not honest with each other, it's just it leads to more problems down the road than you need to deal with. Yes. I don't know. Well, actually, you guys, if you're ready for a couple questions, we do have a couple questions from yep. the audience. Um, sure. How would you suggest going about finding a mentor? Was one question. Uh um, well, I mean, if you're in school, uh, a lot of our professors have also worked at game studios. Like Patrick uh, worked at Wide Load, and so we knew him through that, through our classes and stuff like that. So if you have professors who do work at work in the industry in some way, I'd look to them. Otherwise, um, just meeting people at conventions and conferences and stuff like that is always great. But uh, Twitter is also actually a really interesting, mm-hmm. a really interesting thing because you can make quick and formal comments and then have that conversation with that person, and then that can lead to bigger, longer conversations, and then suddenly you have this friend with all this experience you can go to when you need help. What I would suggest to do is find somebody that you admire. Find somebody who you want to be like, and then just, you know, uh, don't worry about, don't be self-conscious about it. Just get out there and contact them. Be honest. Tell them, hey, I really admire you. I want to learn from you. And every time you, every time, you, you know, and then say, Will you be, just be straight out with it. Will you, if I have problems, if I run into anything, will you mentor me? Will you be able to give me the time to, to help me through things? And then anytime you run into a problem, just be flat out honest with them again. Tell them exactly what the problem is and ask them for their help. It sounds simple, but it's really, really helpful and a lot of people don't think to do it. Right. Next. All right. 
Another yes, question we have, uh, any tips for how best to find, engage, and work with other students on game development? Uh, this particular person has a trouble finding artists, uh, which has been limiting their production capabilities and hurting morale. Um, you know, if you're looking for somebody to, to, if you don't care if you work with them in person, uh, there's a great community of developers at uh, a website called TIG Forums. Uh, it's TIGForums.com. Well, it's it's TickSource.com. It's TickSource.com. And then you would go to the for their forums there. And they have a, a huge uh, pool of developers, designers, artists, etc., who are willing to work uh, with you just because just for the sake of wanting to work on cool projects. Um, if you're looking to work with people in person, I think you know going out to uh, game jams uh, mm -hmm. is a is a really great step. Uh, going out to local developer meetups like IGDA meetups um, is another great thing to do. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I, I would definitely go with a lot of the local stuff, um, and which a lot of that you can find up online through things like Meetup, um, uh, which is a, a website where you can find like local uh, right. events based around your interests. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Take Source is great. Um, I don't know, I, I met a lot of people just through classes and stuff like that, so... Right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, but, boy. Yeah, but thank you so much, Jay and Phil, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, yeah. we, have, we have a couple more sessions coming up yet, and uh, go ahead and check the Watch Live page for those, and I hope you're all enjoying Alt Dev Student Summit. Heather, Thanks. can I jump in and say one thing real quick? Yeah, yeah. If you guys want to continue the conversation, if you have any other questions, go to DIYGameDev.com. We've got a little tweet button that will tweet at both me and Phil. And feel free to ask your question, and we'll get right back to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jay, and thank right. you, Phil. Have Thanks. a good one. You too. Bye.